In this lesson, we are going to have a look at the rules of differentiation, which will help us to calculate the derivative faster. In the previous two lessons, we had a look at the process of determining the derivative using first principles. This is a very lengthy process. But, just like we have exponential laws that help us to simplify exponential expressions more effectively, there are also rules of differentiation that helps us to differentiate or determine the derivative faster. Up to now, we've been using the terms derivative and also determining the gradient at a point. And now we're going to add a third term and that is to differentiate. The first of these differentiation rules looks as follows. So this rule states that if I want to calculate the derivative, I simply take the exponent that I have and multiply it in front with the constant value. So our constant value of a will be multiplied with the exponent k. And in the exponent itself, I simply subtract 1. Remember that this rule is a shortcut for a longer algebraic calculation. And just like any other pattern, it can simply be applied. So if we go and have a look at an example, and we have fx is equal to 3x squared. To calculate our derivative, we simply take our exponent of 2 and go and multiply in front. So that will be 3 times 2. And in the exponent itself, we subtract 1. Therefore, my derivative will be 6x to the power of 1. Or if we have gx as minus 6x cubed, to calculate the derivative, I'm going to start off taking the exponent of 3 and multiplying it in front. So that will be minus 6 multiplied by 3. And in my exponent, I subtract 1. So the final derivative will be minus 18x squared. The second rule states that if a function consists of more than one term, each term can be differentiated on its own. Therefore, rule 1 can be applied per term. And if we now go and have a look at g, we will see that it consists of three terms, and we can now differentiate each term on its own. So, for my derivative, I'm going to start off taking the exponent of 3 and multiplying in front, 2 times 3 will give me 6, and in the exponent, 3 minus 1 will give me an exponent of 2. For my second term, the exponent is a 1. If I multiply this 1 in front, I will have minus 5 times 1, and now I will have x to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0, and of course x to the power of 0 is 1. And in my third term, we have a constant value. So here, we actually have an exponent of 0. When I take that 0 and multiply in front, I have 6 times 0. And that means that the whole term becomes 0. So my final derivative consists of two terms, 6x squared minus 5. So now you can add two notes to your rules. If I calculate the derivative of a linear function, so x to the power of 1, then the derivative is simply the constant in front. And if I determine the derivative of a constant function, the derivative is simply 0. Example 1. Determine f prime x. So here we are given a function that consists of three terms, so we are going to differentiate each term on its own. So we're going to start off taking the exponent of 3 and multiplying in front. So that becomes 15. And in the exponent, when I subtract 1, I have 2. Second term, I'm going to take the 2 and multiply in front. So that's a third times 2, which is 2 thirds. And my exponent will become 1 less, and that is x to the power of 1. My third term is a constant, and you can remember that the derivative of a constant is 0. Before we go and have a look at another example, I'm going to remind you of 
two notations that are important. Firstly, you need to be able to change between a root form and exponential form. If, for example, you have the cube root of x squared, you can rewrite this as x to the power of 2 divided by 3. Then you also need to remember how to rewrite a variable in the denominator as something in the numerator by using your law. As an example, if you have 1 over x cubed, it can be written as x to the power of minus 3. These two laws are important because you cannot use your rules of differentiation if there are variables in a root or in the denominator. Example 2. Differentiate the following. And in A we are given a function that consists of two terms. As I've already mentioned, you are not allowed to use your rules of differentiation if you have variables inside roots or in the denominator. That means we will have to go and rewrite this function first. So when rewriting fx, I want to get the x squared out from under the denominator, and that means it will become x to the power of minus 2. And in my second term, I want to rewrite this without the square root, so it's going to become x to the power of 5 over 2 to rewrite the square root. And now I can calculate the derivative by using my rules of differentiation. So for my first term, I'm going to multiply the exponent of minus 2 in front. So it's going to be 1 times minus 2. And in the exponent, I'm going to subtract another 1. For my second term, I'm going to do the same. Take the exponent and multiply the 1 in front with 5 over 2. And in the exponent, I'm going to have 5 over 2 minus 1. So here my final derivative will be equal to minus 2 multiplied with x to the power of minus 3 plus 5 over 2 x to the power of 3 over 2. In example b, we have three terms that need to be differentiated, but once again we need to do some rewriting first. So I'm going to stick with gx. I'm not differentiating yet. Our first term is in the correct form. Our second term, we have x in the denominator, and that needs to change. So I'm going to rewrite that x as x to the power of negative 1. And this can, of course, be written in the numerator or as written now next to the fraction. And my third term has a cube root that I'm going to rewrite as x to the power of 2 divided by 3. So now I can go and calculate the derivative. So in my first term, I'm going to multiply the minus 5 in front, and that will give me minus 5. And x in the exponent, I will have minus 5 minus another 1. For my second term, I'm going to multiply the exponent with 2 over 3. So that will give me minus 2 over 3. And in the exponent, if I subtract another 1, I will have minus 2. And in my third term, the 2 thirds will be multiplied in front. So I'll have minus 2 thirds. And in the exponent, 2 thirds minus 1 will give me minus a third. Lastly, it is important to read your instructions. If the instruction is simply calculate the derivative, we can stop where we are at the moment. But if the instruction is leave your answer with positive exponents, we need to go and change each of these three variables into positive exponents. So in my first term, the x to the power of minus 6 will be moved to the denominator and become positive. Same thing will happen to the x squared in the second term. And in the third term, the x to the power of minus a third will become x to the power of third in the denominator.